Hello everyone, I'm Captain Logan. Welcome back to the Captain Logan Show. As always, it's my wonderful, illustrious chat moderator and producer, DJ Martinez. Hello, DJ. Hey, Cap. How's it going? What's doing? What's I'm going good, on, everybody? man. This evening, I've got guests. I've got a whole room of them. Tonight, we're going to talk about <laughs> the late, great Jack Kirby. Uh, I'm joined tonight by most of the cast of a local play called King Kirby, which is, of course, a stage production about the, the life and career of Jack Kirby. Uh, it is playing on July 22nd to 30th at uh, the Upside Bungie in West Bottoms in Kansas City, Missouri. And most of you guys, of course, are not from around here, but if you happen to be in the area or you can get to the area, you should come and see it. I'm going to go, and I will talk about it on uh, the next show when I come back from hiatus. I actually am technically on hiatus right now, but I broke it so that we can do this. I'll be back in <laughs> August with request month, everybody. But right now, uh, we're going to talk about the early days of Marvel. We're gonna talk about Jack Kirby, and uh, we're gonna talk about uh, stagecraft, a thing that I have not thought about in a long time. I haven't done theater myself in eons. I uh, used to write plays in uh, high school and college, used to direct a little bit. And uh, I did I did playwriting for uh, three semesters in at KU, and I kind of miss it. So it's gonna be a lot of fun jumping back into those waters with you guys. Mm -hmm. um, so right now, let's go ahead and uh, run down the uh, guests we have here. Uh, Chris, right here, is yes. a longtime viewer of Geekvolution, and hit me up about this. I was excited <laughs> when local folks turn out to know the channel. Yeah, we're pretty small potatoes. And um, every now and again, that'll happen. That's how uh, I got involved with Pierce on Spawn Year, who is an ex-cop who just happened to be watching the channel while he was driving around on patrol. <laughs> Ended up building. It turned out he just happened to be into latex uh, suit building and uh, costume making. Ended up building yeah. me a ten-pound Spawn costume that was brilliant that we ended up oh, using for that and show. And it was great. It was amazing. Too. I ended up yeah. changing the entire direction of that show just because I found this cop that had latex stuff. And now we got Chris doing yes. a local production about Jack Kirby. Jack Kirby, yeah. Um, this is really exciting. Yeah, so yeah. No. I'm glad to have you guys. Thanks for coming in studio. Sorry, Chris. No, you're good. You're good. <laughs> My mouth just starts going, and then it's like, okay, what's going on? Well, hey, everybody, what's going on? <laughs> Mine too. That's why I started a show with my name in the title. <laughs> so that any time I happen to cut someone off and somebody complains, I can go, yeah, but my name's in the title. That's fair. <laughs> it covers a multitude of sins. Yeah. Uh, guys, so so uh, the show tonight is going to be obviously different than usual. Uh, we're mostly going to be interviewing these guys, but also uh, discussing the topics I just mentioned. Let's keep it on topic tonight if we can. I'm going to try to keep tonight's show to about an hour. I should never, ever say that because uh, I'm horrible <laughs> at that. But... Um, we're, we're uh, like I said, just going to keep it to uh, Kirby and early Marvel and um, and uh, uh, stage plays, mm -hmm. and then um, as always, you guys can leave a super chat in any dollar amount that guarantees that we will talk about anything you guys want us to talk about uh, in within this topic. We'll answer your questions. Uh, we'll uh, talk about your uh, concerns and notions. Uh, but if you don't want to do that, can't do that, you can leave a regular uh, comment and direct that at DJ Martinez, at the welder, at guy who won't do, be doing nearly as much talking as normal, possibly. He'll answer to anything, and we'll try to answer as many of those as we can as well. Uh, but we're going to start right now just with introductions. Uh, let's go down the line, and we'll start with uh, Jack Kirby. And you can uh, just give us your name and uh, the part that you'll be playing, and then or that you are playing. I'm sure you guys are rehearsing constantly. <laughs> yes. Um, and then uh, I'll throw some questions at you. All right. uh, my name is Glenn Craig. I play Jack Kirby. My name is Chris Cole. I am the director, producer, um, guy who bugged Captain Logan on <laughs> over the interwebs. Uh, I'm the director, producer. I also cast myself as some guy named Stan Lee. <laughs> Stan Lee, yeah, yeah, don't know that guy. He's tell me a face front, enough said, I don't know. What's up with him? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Now, what I want to know is if you possibly found a play written about Jack Kirby where all Stanley gets is a cameo. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't see how that's possible, but <laughs> yeah. if it was, that'd be amazing. Where he just walks he's in. He's the smallest character. Yeah, I mean, yeah. he doesn't... Wow, fascinating. Here's the thing. There's not a whole lot of Stan, and that's actually... Um, it's kind of interesting, too, because when Stan shows up, and once like you enter the... Um, Valley, I doth proclaim this is the magnificent Marvel Age of Comics. That's when you start seeing characters say, start speaking in alliteration. That's when you start hearing folks drop Excelsior on their own. Where even when Stan, it's like Poochie from The Simpsons, 
where when Poochie isn't on screen, people are like, where's Poochie? <laughs> I mean, it's not like that, but Stan is almost a presence. Like, you can still okay. kind of feel he's there, even when his role is relatively contained. So. I, I don't do a ton of interviews anymore, but I'm used to doing these things with with uh, people that have made things I've seen or read before. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it's really interesting doing this before I see a thing, and then exactly, in a yeah. couple weeks I'm going to actually see it. Yeah, uh, so we're trying not to spoil too much. Like, yo, you're really going to like it. It's amazing. You trust I mean, me on this one. it is one. about a real man's life. So if it's, you know enough yeah. about his life, you've already gotten it spoiled. Yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> that's a good point. Jen. I'm Jen Rains, and I'm playing Roz Kirby. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm Violet Springate, and I'm playing Joe Simon, who's uh, Jack Kirby's business partner. And there is a Martin Goodman, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's, yes. Uh, and he couldn't make it, he which couldn't. is, which, which is, is uh, unfortunate. Except I don't really know if I could have gotten another seat in this up. <laughs> so uh, it's okay. He's my boyfriend. He could have sat on my lap. <laughs> <laughs> true story. True story. We were casting the show. Glenn asked, like, "Hey, so well, do you need to do?" And I was like, ah, "You know, a couple more roles." Glenn goes, "All right. So my boyfriend." is a really talented voice actor and has been looking to transition to the stage. If, and I start thinking, as like, okay, if we could have basically the protagonist of the show and the antagonist of the show <laughs> be a couple, yeah. that dynamic, will just... That's it. That's perfect. Yeah. But a bit like enemies to lovers. Exactly. <laughs> Except in reverse, Love too. I mean, they yeah. took me aside afterwards, like, if we break up, because of you, just so you know. <laughs> it's like, you're good. <laughs> so, Chris, would you tell us a little bit about the uh, play itself? Yes. How the thing came together and got written, and how you guys had got involved doing a production on your own? Well, I first actually encountered the play. It was written by Crystal Skillman and Fred Van Linty in 2014. Originally, is for a comics theater festival. Um, and a lot of people know about it from... This was during... You know the height of COVID during quarantine. A lot of people know it because it was released as a podcast, as an audio drama. Oh, and that's how I was first exposed to it. Listened to it, loved it. So people can listen to it. People can and listen get to the it. story. That's great. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, you could go today get like the whole experience. Yeah, I mean, if you're like you know you're in California and you can't make it to Kansas yeah. City, you, <laughs> exactly. could, you could just listen to it. Yeah. You can't hear our charming voices though. Yeah, I mean, I'm really right. proud of this cast. Just I'm, I'm partial, but um heard it and I had just worked with uh, Glint and Violet for the Barn Players, their 6x10 10 minute play festival and that went super well I was really happy with everybody involved so I got, I got a little brave and um, I reached out to Crystal Skillman and said hey I love the show, I'm a local director Technically, I had one credit under my belt, but that still counts. It hey, still counts. That's enough. It's enough. <laughs> it's enough. And said, I love the show. I would love to produce this for the Kansas City Fringe Festival. I didn't count on both Crystal Skillman and Fred Van Lindsay being super nice, too. So they That's emailed right. me back. They're like, yeah, absolutely. You, you said it'd be an hour? Oh, we'll cut it down for you. By the way, our friend Bobby Cronin did some music for it. If you were interested, they're like, yeah, okay. Yeah, I guess this is happening now. <laughs> and it just kind of rolled from there. And um, then we found, like, a, I reached out to a lot of the 6x10 folks, too, because, well, I basically said, you folks are great. Do you want to get paid this time? Yeah. Because, you know, Chris reached out oh, yeah. to me, and he was like, hey, like, you want to be in the show? And I was like, well, can you send it to me, right? So he sends it to me, and I read it, and there is one girl in the whole show. And I was the only girl on cast of the other the other play, mm -hmm. and so I read it, and uh, my heart kind of dropped a little bit because I I personally I think that I didn't like that role. I didn't want to be that role. I didn't like it. But I was like, you, uh, you want me to be Ross, don't you? And he was like, yeah, if you could. Um, and I was like, okay, but like, can I read for the other characters? And then he let me read for the other characters. And then we had somebody drop out. Mm -hmm. uh, and I got to be Joe Simon instead of Roz, and I'm very happy with it. And it was kind of amazing, too, because the one good thing, too, this was kind of done with, like, the blessing of uh, my good friends Crystal and Fred. <laughs> uh, they're going to see this and be like, it's time to stop, Chris. <laughs> but um, they basically said, like, look, it's about real people. This is a real story. But at the end of the day, it's theater. Yeah. 
trust your instincts cast who you think is going to be best don't focus too hard on the actual people and when violet when you sent your auditions you sent your recordings i was sitting there like okay uh at the time we had a joe simon and i was like if if anything happens to our Joe Simon, <laughs> we'll be good because your audition. I loved the Joe Simon. It was excellent, yeah. So was there so was poison fun. involved. <laughs> okay, I had not <laughs> seen him <laughs> in months. So okay. so I was going to mention that because I, I was going to say gender swapping with uh, plays is, is a tradition that goes back to Shakespeare. Yes. And then poison yes. came up. <laughs> okay, I, I have not seen Daniel since we did the 6x10 play. Okay. No poison involved. Legally, no poisoning is happening. Yeah. <laughs> and we've talked about how the rest of us got in the cast. We want to talk about how Jen got in the cast? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I was working with Chris on a few different things, mm -hmm. and I kind of just mentioned to him that I had an awful lot of free time and an interest in doing some behind-the-scenes stuff. And he's like, well, hey, you can help out, be a stage manager or whatever. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah. cool, I don't want to talk to anyone or be in front of anyone or look at anyone. And then the other actor dropped out, and he was like, okay, look, Violet wants to be Joe, and he let me listen to their audition, and I was like, Violet has to be Joe. Yeah. Um, yeah. And he's like, okay, but I, until I find a Roz, can you just read the part for a read-through, and it'll be fine. And then she did amazing at the read-through. That's like the yeah. ridiculous thing, too, because, like, Jen, first of all, Jen, let me just say... You are Ross. <laughs> you basically are Ross Kirby reincarnated. <laughs> um, but so we're reading the part, and Jen asks, "Well, do I have to do an accent here?" It's like, "No, don't worry about it." She goes, "Well, can I?" She's like, "Yeah, go ahead." And the opening scene is actually an auction at Sotheby's too, where they're auctioning off a lot of like the first issue of Fantastic Four, or at least the cover of the first issue. Oh my god, Chris, spoilers. I know, I sorry! Say, okay, sorry, everyone! One thing we haven't mentioned yet is that everyone except Jack also plays a bunch of tiny, tiny yes. parts throughout the show. Because yeah. I was gonna ask, yeah. right? Yeah. because I couldn't see it being an only four or five person cast no. it was, yeah. unless it was a, a like, so, close room yeah. drama. So yeah, we're, we're our role plus ensemble role. Yeah. Okay, yeah. sweet, yeah. yes. I get to be lazy. <laughs> yeah. I well, think I've got, like... Probably not, though. You probably have a lot of lines. Yeah, no. <laughs> I only have one character. <laughs> well, the nice thing, too, the one thing I really like about this script is that the guy who plays Martin Goodman also plays Jack Leibowitz, also plays Victor Fox. Um, in the full well, version, even plays um, General Patton, too. Oh, wow. So, yeah. It I goes mean, back to war stuff. Oh, the, yeah. Yeah, there is some more. So when you say when you say the full version, so mm -hmm. yours is condensed. Yes, uh, they cut it down for us. They cut oh, down wow. for us. That was the amazing thing too. They're good nice friends. Guys. Very yeah, yeah, my yeah, friends. Very good friends. <laughs> yeah, me and Fred Crystal were gonna hang out after yeah. this. Yeah. She plays a ski ball. Uh, but uh, so yeah, the whole show. I need to get ski ball. You need to get ski ball. <laughs> you need some games here. This place is so I empty do, too. Yeah, nothing yeah. to do. Nothing to do. Here. Very empty warehouse feel. <laughs> But the one thing, too, the show is set basically from 1929 to 1994. That was my next question, was just how far it spans. Yeah, basically yeah. it's... You have to play young and old. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and that's kind of the one thing, too. He that... gets to be teenage Stanley at one point. Yeah. I do. <laughs> so we had a conversation. That sounds believable. Yeah. That it's funny, too, fun. because Violet and Glenn are the youngest performers of the cast, and here I come as seventeen year old Stanley, like And we're supposed fellow... to be like full grown adults at this Yeah, place. that's great. Hello fellow kids, it's me, your friend <laughs> Stanley. So there were a lot of conversations about how do we de age Stanley, how do we make him yeah. and Jen actually had the best idea. She's like make him a doozy. So we put like a like one of those flat caps on him. Uh, we took off the prosthetic mustache. I'm wearing a suit at this point. Yeah. You know, like. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah, a little bit of stagecraft here. We said there's gonna be stagecraft, yeah. a little bit of costume trickery here. Well, and costuming everybody has kind of been fun. Oh, yeah. So yeah, I've yeah. been I've been being like, hello, yes, I'm looking for something that maybe is like World War Two, and people are like, what? 
I've just I've scoured every thrift store within 20 miles of my house, mm -hmm. and I found some really cool stuff. I'll be honest. Are you, are yeah. you having to create anything from scratch, or is it all things. okay? Yeah. Mostly like the poster board and stuff. Uh, poster board. Basically and, everything written up. Are you guys building sets and things yourself, or do you have other behind the scenes people that we're not talking to right now? It, it's just us. No cool. Well, I guess I mean, that's. I mean, your your dad's kind of. Yeah, my yeah. dad's doing some mm -hmm. like light set building, but a lot of what we're doing, we have a really trimmed down set. Yeah. So it's just like a lot of furniture that I have in my garage. <laughs> yeah, because it's. You guys are really taking festival. me back right now. <laughs> yeah. I'm getting so nostalgic yeah. for high school. I remember what I created high school. <laughs> What's so fun about this stage is the fact that there are basically two set pieces. There is the drawing table and there is a seating table that functions as different things and how we're actually showing passages through time and uh, just setting changes is through lighting. Yeah. So cool. one second, it starts off as Kirby being old, being himself, and then it just suddenly hard shifts to him being a kid. That's all lighting. And that's all audience interpretation. So. I love that and kind of also yeah. lens. Yeah. Oh, you guys are getting me excited. <laughs> and part of it too is just because it's one of those where it's part of its necessity too because we're sharing our venue with five other shows. Yeah. So we've got basically ten minutes to set up, ten minutes to get backstage so they can let the folks in, hour to do the show, then like ten minutes to break down. So it's very... So we can't have a big set. We can't have a big set, no. It has to fit in, you know, it has to fit in one band. So too. would it be wrong to call this kind of black box theater? Or like black boxy? A little bit, no. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's in, it's in it's a bungee esque. gym. So, yeah, <laughs> it's in a I bungee would, gym. I would call it black boxy. Now, I will say, I mean, there's also, most of the fringe theaters are black box theaters. Like, we actually have Thursday, the 21st, we have our preview at the Black Box at the West Bottoms. Oh, okay, cool. So, yeah, uh, there's a lot of shows at the Black Box on Truce. <laughs> the B-O-T, the Black Box on Truce. So, um, yeah, Black Box is absolutely a fair term. And But I think the one nice thing, too, this is an incredibly strong script. And we have, I believe at least, an incredibly strong cast. So I've just been thrilled watching this come together. I'm, I'm excited to see it. Yeah, yeah. sounds great. The West Bottoms is where the haunted houses are, yeah? Yes, yeah. yes. I, that's the only thing I've ever been there for. And actually, I do want to say, too, that I want to sort of bring this back to comics a little Absolutely, bit. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, the Upside Bungie, one of the things they do, other than Fridge Fest, is the first Sunday of every month they host Dr. Sketchy's Anti-Art School. Which is super cool. It was founded by Molly Crabapple, who's done some graphic novels. I think she did some stuff for Marvel. I want to. She said in like an interview she had a crush on Gambit. So I mean that you know. <laughs> That's not a name <laughs> I recognize. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I <laughs> uh, love indie stuff too. Yeah. Uh, but anti art school, Doctor Sketchies. I just butchered that name real fast. Uh, Doctor Sketchies is super cool because what it is. It's an art class, but all the models are like cabaret performers and burlesque dancers, and they have um, other branches of it have had like X Men Night, and one time they actually had like Trans Metropolitan Night too. Wow! So yeah, why do uh, I never hear about cool things that happen? That's like the thing. Here's about it now. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> there you go. Part of the joy of Fridge Fest, too. And that's actually one of the things I like about Fridge Fest is that you get to find all these cool little niche theaters that are out of the way, that are a little hidden, that you've probably been by like a billion different times, and you get to actually experience something that's been there this whole time that you never knew about. So, um, let, so I'm going to get to some... Uh, comment questions and things here in a second, but DJ, do we have any questions yet? We'll go ahead and go to the phones, as it were, uh, for yeah. two, and then we'll come back to whatever is in my captain -y little phone. Go ahead. By the way, I have to apologize. I've been playing to the wrong camera this entire time. Oh, which, <laughs> which, camera? which camera are we looking so, at? <laughs> so, you, so we're being shot with this camera. Okay, yeah. We're... And then the secondary camera is just for DJ right now. Oh. I was actually going to do a oh. multi cam setup tonight, yeah, and this yeah. ended up looking better. Uh, so that, that's why we did that. But I'm used to looking at there 
and yeah, uh, yeah. I opened the show being off kilter, so right. uh, I could have pretended like it was on purpose, but it's why like, would you do that? Anyway, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. DJ, what do we have, man? All right, we got a lot of questions. Um, first one was from Adam March. He says, "Is um, what is each member of the cast's favorite Jack Kirby created character?" Well, that was going to come up later. Let's do it now. Absolutely. Ooh. Let's start with Chris. I'm going to go, you know what? I'm going to go with a little bit of a, a dark horse here. The bugs in the new gods. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just because I love the fact that you've got this big, epic, planetary, um, new genesis, apocalypse, and then you've got, like, this little underground that nobody actually likes. <laughs> that even Orion's like, why would I help them? What's up? <laughs> Well, he's going back to his monster roots with all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's amazing, too, because... Uh, I mean, the cool thing... T the New Gods get a shout-out in the show. Probably not the most flattering, because... <laughs> it's uh, not a flattering shout-out. Well, you know, I think uh, I actually... Uh, a few years ago, I played at Comic-Con. I saw a panel of Brian Azzarello, and he was talking about... This was New 52 time. And he yeah. was talking about his Wonder Woman ride, and people were like, yeah, I love how you brought on the New Gods. And he's like, yeah, everybody loves the New Gods, but not enough to buy their books. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly right. So, no, people yeah. want the New Gods to show up in Justice League things, yeah. not to have their own thing. <laughs> exactly, yeah, They should yeah. just be little side characters and nobody ever really has to worry about. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, okay, cool, Steppenwolf's here. We all, you guys love Steppenwolf, right? Like, uh, yeah, yeah, everybody okay. loves Steppenwolf. Yeah, my favorite Jen, character. do you have an answer? I like Thor. Yeah. But I was always super into, like, <clears throat> mythology and reading and all that, so when I kind of got into this kind of stuff, it's actually really, really recent for me. I think I started getting into it with, like, the mm -hmm. X-Men um, animated series back in the 90s when I was a kid, yeah, yeah. which... This bump from way over here. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like that theme song is actually playing in my head right now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but I've always been, like, super into that kind of stuff. So I was like, well, I really, I mean, I really like Thor. <laughs> I had, like, Dad Bod Thor in the new, like, in the Dude, movies. Dad Bod then, Thor Dad, is actual Viking Thor, best Thor. Dad anyway, Bod please. Thor is, like, hands down the best Thor. Yeah. Moving right along, Violet! Um, so I guess if he made Thor, does he make Loki too, then? Yes, yes. Okay, because I was going to say Bucky Barnes because I knew for a fact he made Bucky Barnes. <laughs> sure. Um, but I like Loki better than Bucky. So I'm gonna go with Loki. Um, I love Tom Hiddleston very much. I've never read any of the comics. I'm sorry, but I have I have seen the Loki TV show and every single MCU movie. Um, and Tom Hiddleston has my heart, and Loki is a fantastic character. And yes, there. I do want to say too that like when we talk about Jack Kirby, his influence, like you have Loki, you have the Scarlet Witch, uh, you have like look look. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to confess something. I haven't had a chance to see the new Doctor Strange yet. Oh, it's good. But it's I, wonderful. I gave up. I was like, look, just show me the Illuminati scene. Just show it to me. Yeah, just show it. Sure. And you've got, like, the Scarlet Witch killing Mr. Fantastic and then killing Black Bolt. And, oh, and she killed Black Bolt hard, too. Did you just... The new it's been season. out long it's enough. I, feel out like. Like. Okay, I spoil for myself. Like anybody watching watching it. It. Yeah. So, it's it's look, the glurry, the the glurry, the blurry handheld camera footage I saw was super good. Just say it, Greg. Do you have a favorite? So, I, I was the president of my anime club, so I was more into manga growing sure, up. Sure, um, yeah. So I only got recently uh, introduced to Marvel, honestly, with the first Avengers movie because all my friends wanted to see it because apparently there was a bunch of butts in it. <laughs> so I actually was like, I should actually get into these characters. And the one that I actually really got into was Captain America because it's just in scary times when it can be hard to be patriotic, just seeing yep. Captain America. I'm literally looking at a picture right now, right yep. over here, and I'm just like... <laughs> That's in that's an American right there, and I could really ever. like put myself to a point where I could live up to that. So that's why Captain America is my favorite. Yeah, and beyond patriotism, just altruism, right? Yeah. Like if DC exactly. wasn't gonna give a Superman, at least Marvel kind of. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, DJ, I saw a super chat there. Yeah, Josh Galisano, five dollars super chat. Thanks, Josh. What's up, man? Was there anything in Jack Kirby's artwork that influenced the production design? Also, what is your favorite piece of Kirby artwork? Yeah, and along with that, this was another thing I was about to go to. Mm -hmm. uh, how much actual comics are in the play? Like physical 
comics? Little bits here and there. Cool. Basically, uh, I always, as speaking, speaking as a director, you see, <laughs> um, I always made a point like, okay, emphasize this character because people know who Groot is. Oh yeah. So you've got Stanley like, look, I'll lay us full color masterpieces. Groot, the creature from Planet X. Uh, Which is interesting because, if, sorry, if this play yeah. had come out in 2013, yeah, that exactly. would not be the case. No, yeah. exactly. I mean, it's, uh, I think it was uh, Chris Sims from the War Rocket Ajax podcast that said the most remarkable thing about living what we do is that you can walk up to somebody on the street and they have an opinion about Bucky Barnes. Yeah. Uh, as for the actual, like I say, there's a lot of minimalism in the set. A lot of it wasn't necessarily like we didn't have like a whole lot of space to do like the big grandiose when I think about my favorite Jack Kirby images that full page splash from the glory boat where it's Orion and Light Ray and they're like if we must die for new Genesis to live that's my go to why do you think Jack Kirby art that's what pops in my head uh but, I mean, it's amazing, too. Like, you go back and you read Galactus, and you see, like, how much detail there is in, like, okay, Johnny Storm's going to the spaceship. Like, how does this work? I don't... Uh, even, like, the early X-Men comics aren't necessarily his best work, but you go back and you read, like, the Master Mold story, you can see, like, actual actual new gods Jack Kirby trying to break out you can see like yeah. I'm building a robot that builds other robots in his chest that's so I mean there's so much well and the Silver Surfer and Galactus too Silver Surfer Galactus too mm -hmm. yeah uh, so the actual production design was just kind of straightforward out of necessity but you do have like we like we're kind of talking about before too we have like a lot of the stills a lot of the pages and yeah, it's more so pages than, right. than actual um, comics. Like, there's the auction, there's an auction scene at the beginning and then the film, like, or film, what? The film, <laughs> yeah. 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 so I assume you'd need yeah. some oversized. Yeah. 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 Yeah, 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 So we have, like, so, well, not yet, but we're gonna have mm -hmm. uh, some oversized things. I think of Spider-Man and the Fantastic Four mm -hmm. are in it. Yes. And if I have any say in it, which I do because I'm the one making them, they're gonna be super extra. So he's going to say, oh, they just really need to be sketches, and then it'll just be an obscene amount of amazing art. I'm not an artist, but I'll figure it out. <laughs> I know people. Like, you've got to figure it out. Um, but yeah, we're, I'm, I actually kind of reached out to some people in the comic book community recently. Oh, that's great. Um, to say, hey, I need to make these props. I want them to look real. I want them to be accurate. I want to, you know, I want to make sure that what you're seeing up there looks up. I don't just want to be like, here's a piece of paper folded in half with Superman printed on it. Yeah. You know? Well, if you can actually see the artwork on it, you're going to want it to look kind of Kirby-esque. And if yeah, it's going to look like anybody else, like if you're doing a Ditko Spider-Man, it can't look like Kirby drew it. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. Speaking of that, how do you do this play without Ditko? Ditko has... <laughs> I mean, well, well, I guess here's, it. well, here's I the question. I can, answer, I can answer my own question. He was a recluse, soft spoken, yeah. let himself be recorded. It's probably actually really easy to do this play. Look, <laughs> the BBC made an entire documentary about Steve Dicko yeah. with like one photo. It's, <laughs> it's fantastic. It is, yeah. It's searching, searching for Steve Dicko. It is. And at the end, Neil Gaiman gets to meet Steve Dicko, but you don't. <laughs> I know, yeah. But you don't. You don't. No. I spoiled no that. To be jealous. Yeah, exactly. I spoiled that, Chris. I mean, it's funny, too, because. Uh, you know, and there's a lot of a lot of the issues brought up in that documentary about Stan are addressed with yeah. in the play as well. Like you have, uh, like Jonathan Ross talked afterwards about how he tried to ask Stan Lee, like, okay, so who actually created Spider-Man? Yeah, I was going to ask if that was there. <laughs> and, there's a lot of debate about that. Yeah, and what Kirby's involvement there, there was, if any, mm -hmm. and of course, he he, he claimed to basically straight up create the character yeah, yeah yeah i mean it's not i don't think we really we don't say anything gets sued they'll say that right now <laughs> yeah. disney's got lawyers yeah, Disney wants uh, to us. but i mean it does touch on the fact that you know you hear like once you kind of start learning how the comics industry works you hear the phrase marvel style 
yep. where you know, like, okay, Stan gave Jack an outline, and Jack worked from that. And then, like, from years, it's like, okay, how big was this outline? <laughs> and, like, even Stan was, like, sometimes he'd call up and say, like, hey, Jack, today we're going to write about Dr. Doom. <laughs> And that was it. Like, good. Go on. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, it does touch on the fact that Kirby was, like, really a driving force. I don't think it really... So, we actually... Like, one of the other... Uh, one of the other conversations we had... Uh, we touch on the fact of whether or not Stanley is a villain. Which I will say that we I don't... We fight him on it. We, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I don't believe in this story that Stanley is necessarily a villain... He's nuanced, and he kind yeah. of, uh, and... Chris wants to believe the best in Stanley. I believe the Jen best. and I, on the other hand, I firmly believe... Oh, Glenn also. I hadn't talked okay, to Glenn, yeah. so <laughs> I didn't want to speak for you. We firmly believe that Stan is the villain of the story. Stan did not do the right thing. That's it. He didn't do anything good unless it was good for Stan, and I'm sorry, but that doesn't that's not the right thing. That's the only thing. We got some hot takes here. All of a sudden we're <laughs> no. waiting for the chat to explode. No, so, no. I was I was no. so shocked when People I People are gonna think I did though. this on purpose because the way the Civil War has happened, <laughs> right. right down the middle. <laughs> uh and that that is wild that, that it worked out that way. No, that was a question I had for you guys is if if anybody after reading the script and working on this play had a shattering disillusionment about Stanley. Oh, I, I totally did. I didn't even know who Jack Kirby was when Chris first reacted to me about this play. Like, he reached out to me about this play and he sent me the script and I was like, oh, cool, like, about a comics guy. All right, like, like Stanley. Um, <laughs> some comics guy. Some comics some guy, yeah, exactly. And, and, comics, and, and then I, the comics, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so I Google Jack Kirby and I was like, oh, okay, like, he's actually important. Like, I'd never heard of him before in my life. And yeah, I'm not a comics kid. But you're but not like, the only one. But I yeah. love the MCU and I know who Stan Lee is, like, a million times over. Like, I know who Stan Lee is. And so to hear about Jack Kirby and to see how... Um, Stan essentially ruined <laughs> Jack Kirby's like outlook on everything. Like you know, uh, just having a tantrum over I here. Will he say, say I will say, I I will say though that Stan, it, it, as look when you play a character, you kind of sympathize with them a little bit. But when you cast yourself, when you cast as yourself, a character, <laughs> I would like to say. But I will say this though. Stan was never Bob Kane. I don't know that. Let me tell you that guy named Bill Finger later on. It's definitely not a Kane Finger thing. There's also a really good documentary about that. Yes. You should see. It's on Amazon. Uh, I do have Amazon. (laughs) But, um, yeah, so just just super super fast background with that. For the longest time, the only credit you saw for Batman was created by Bob Kane. Mm. And Finger had a lot more to do with the creation of Bob Kane, or of, pardon me, of Batman, <laughs> than Bob Kane did. Uh, and it was a uh, somewhat similar situation if you listen, to, if you believe what what Kirby says about uh, the creation of a lot of characters with Stan Lee. But certainly, the the thing with Kane and Finger is a lot more extreme. Yeah, and I know with uh, Dicko too. There's that famous panel where it's like okay here's what i created for spider-man and there's you know the costume there's all the villains there's that little flashlight belt buckle he used to have yeah. back in the day that i think chip Zdarsky brought back for a minute yep uh and on the other side it's like here's what stan created and it's just the words spider-man <laughs> now like i say it's now of course. But it's also hard to say how much truth there is to yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. Because you didn't hear the conversations yeah. Yeah, yeah, behind yeah. closed doors. Yeah. The creation of comic characters is always and really muddled because yeah. it is such a collaborative experience. And also, too, when Dicko left the book and John Romita came on, it was still good. It was still, yeah. I just think that I didn't have any shift in my perception of Stan. And maybe that's just because I'm a little bit of a cynic. Yeah. And I think anyone who's successful had to step on the back of someone else in order That's to get right. there. Yeah. And so I was like, oh no, that tracks. But, <laughs> but also, I'll be fair with Stan. He made a brand around himself. Yeah. He like, did, he yeah. did. Like, it, it Even was... I know who Stan Lee is, and I know yeah. nothing about, so, about any of these people. I mean, I'm not saying that he's he's definitely not the hero. Sorry. Yeah, no, I know he's you not. think you want. No. Well, no, no, I won't go but, that far. <laughs> he, he just didn't do the right thing. He and and he. I'm not gonna say that he was selfish, and, but I. But he was selfish. He was selfish. <laughs> uh, he just. Yeah. He he. I 
think he was just like the carnival barker kind of person mm-hmm. in there and yeah. he didn't and i think they had a very different interpretation of what actual work was Jack Kirby was, like, very much yeah. of, like, the actual physical labor that I'm putting into it, whereas Stan Lee was more, like, the razzle-dazzle. Yeah. <laughs> see, yeah. I definitely get yeah. the uh, relating to your character thing or, like, wanting to see the best in your character because, yeah. like, we've spent this whole time, and Joe Simon's name hasn't even come up, but, like, yeah. I didn't know who he was before this either. But, yeah. like, from my understanding from reading the play and reading up about Joe Simon, Joe helped Jack create a lot of these characters, including mm-hmm. Captain America yeah. and Bucky and well, all that. Oh, he's the writer, too, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it was original... a 50-50 split as yeah. far as... Yeah, like, as, as far as I was aware. Yeah. yeah. But, like, yeah. And like, there was some argument don't know who between them either. about how much uh, yeah. each of them should take credit for that, I, I, I think. Mm-hmm. When um, you look yeah. at, like, the history of comics, the more you realize that all, like, from the Golden Age to the Silver Age, all those guys kind of hate each other. Yeah. Like, there's a st- the story about how... It's, it's sad. Yeah, a little bit. It's it's hard not to you know if you grew up with comics and you think yeah. of it as this uh, like like really big, positive exciting fun escapist thing and then you look and right. then you start to realize that the making unfortunately behind the scenes of most things yeah, is yeah. not as is not necessarily in the same spirit as the thing that was created right yeah. uh, the, you know I had I had the same sort of disillusionment when I started reading about the the making of Star Trek Next Generation yes uh, and, and yeah, things yeah. like that I, I had that with Voyager did you guys. Yeah, in Voyager even more so. Oh, right. <laughs> did, did you guys read Marvel the Untold Story? I've I've long time ago. I haven't actually read it recently. I did start reading um, Abraham Reisman's book, The True Believer: The Rise and Fall of Stanley. Okay, I've not read that. It's it's interesting. I haven't finished it yet, but it goes into a lot of how you know Stanley wasn't necessarily. He had some family issues from, like, his childhood to yeah. his adulthood. And then as we, you know, unfortunately his last few years, there were, I mean, there were people stealing his blood. <laughs> there were home health nurses who were like, yeah, we need to draw blood today. This is Yeah, there was bad. a lot of elder abuse stuff that came yeah. out right before he died and especially yeah. right after. Jen, you made a really good point earlier, though, um, about Stan Lee, the idea that, um, he, he made he was able to make a brand around himself it's really easy it's a lot easier uh, I think to make people uh, believe that you're a particular kind of person and to kind of frame yourself when you're the front man of something yeah. when you're when you're so uh, you know in um, in front of people in the public eye. But um, he also wasn't a straight up fraud either yeah um, no, 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 like yeah. the I, I think it would be unfair to say because if you listen to um, the few interviews Kirby did uh, about this, the, the, about the early days, and you go to, I, I listened to a really fascinating radio show that he did. He did an hour and a half interview um, in 1990 mm. with a uh, radio show that was co hosted by uh, J. Michael Straczynski. Oh, wow. Oh, I don't know if he had his own radio show or if he was just <laughs> also guesting that week. I couldn't tell. It was really strange. It seemed like he had his own radio show. Uh, he sold just, it to a festa. It was cool. Yeah. Just as he was finishing his Saturday morning cartoon career, yeah. and uh, Jack Kirby had worked uh, in that medium right at the uh, in the late 80s. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know if that comes up in the play, but um, but he, he worked for Ruby Spears. And some uh, they they did a Superman show uh, and some other things uh, around that time. Yeah. But anyway, um, it was it was really interesting to listen to him in that because he almost couldn't get Stanley's name out of his mouth. Like he couldn't he couldn't say it. He didn't want to. And he's spouting all this like optimism and I believe in people while simultaneously he cannot talk about Stanley. Yeah. Yeah. He just can't do it. And that was that was really sad and kind of and kind of heartbreaking to hear. But real quick, what what I, what I mean by he's not a fraud is. Um, in that radio show, uh, Kirby is, somebody calls in, they, they do a call-in section, and uh, somebody calls in and says, um, and asks what the process was, and it wasn't public knowledge the way it is now, and, uh, you know, how did you and Stanley create uh, books, and he says, <laughs> I plotted everything, mm-hmm. and I, uh, and Stanley put the words in, and this guy was shocked, you know, that, that he said that. But the words are also important. Yes. Yes. And if you go back and look at a lot of Stanley's writing, yeah, a lot of it is super hammy. We're also talking about uh, a, a period in comics where the yeah. uh, the expectations were different. 
and uh, but there's some really brilliant writing in there, and so it's not like the man wasn't talented. No, no, no. no yeah. And I, that's why I'm, I'm saying like I, I don't believe he wasn't talented. I just believe yeah. that they had a very different idea of like what the actual talent was. Like I said, Jack Kirby was very much I'm a good artist. That's where it goes. Whereas Stan Lee was very much like the ideas guy. Like he had such great, fantastic things in his mind. He was so creative, and I think it was just like and a he very... thought that was what stories were. Exactly, yeah. and, and and Kirby it... was actually plotting through his picture. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it just it. I never, you know, that's why I think it didn't really change my opinion of Stan. Sure, sure. Because yeah. I mean, I didn't ever at any point think, well, this guy isn't talented. He's a fraud. I was just thinking yeah. they had a very different idea. And they had a very different, I, I wouldn't say work ethic, because they both worked very hard. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I just think they both had, like, a different work style. Whereas Jack Kirby yeah. was, like, super nose to the grindstone, and Stan Lee was very, like, in his head creating and inventing, and I think that was just the difference. Well, and I wasn't saying you were calling Stanley a fraud. Oh, no. But, like, <laughs> I just wanted to clarify before when I got Bob angry comments. name came up, I thought yeah. the need to really clarify yeah. that. That's when we throw like, some gasoline in the fire, though. Like, let's get real here. <laughs> DJ, I, do you see any other questions in the comments right now? Let's do one more if you see anything. Uh, we got one quick super chat from Philip Kelton. Thanks, Phil. He says, What's up, sir? Stanley had great power. He was not responsible. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean... And that actually goes back to uh, the point, too, about Stanley's writing, that you hear with great power comes great... You hear that beer commercials. I mean, that is probably one of the most quoted lines in pop culture, too. And it was something that Stanley just kind of threw on a whim. Like, okay, I need a moral for this Spider-Man story. Well, I was going to say, it sticks with people because it sounds yeah. almost biblical. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Okay. Say. What I was going to say is that what... I kind of figured out through this, like, I loved Stan Lee growing up because I saw the branded man. Mm -hmm. And then he had a couple controversies near the end of his life, um, especially about what his interpretation of Spider-Man should have been. Yeah. And yeah. as a trans person, I was kind of sitting there like, I don't like that. And <laughs> But I also just, I started learning about Jack Kirby during that point because I knew a little bit about Jack Kirby before I got into the play. And I kind of did get that black and white for a second where I'm like, Stan Lee's a villain and Jack Kirby is an unsung hero. And then going through this play and, like, seeing a lot of... They put Jack as very angry. And looking back at his interviews and stuff like that, I see it. There's a lot of anger and passion. So half of it's about righteous anger. Half of it is, I know I'm better than you in some way. And I was like, these are not heroes or villains, even though literally in the beginning he's like, there are heroes and villains. It's just they're humans. They're people. Yeah. They, yeah. they make bad decisions. They make good decisions. And so there's no vilifying either person. What yeah. kind of research did you guys each do beyond, <laughs> beyond just reading the play? I need to figure out how Jack Kirby walked. For that a was a whole conversation. <laughs> I'll tell you the truth, though. There are three major conversations we had in like our show. Uh, one was the mustache. Uh, <laughs> two was, okay, the cigar. Are we going to use a prop cigar or a real cigar? We're just... We're still having that conversation, too. Please do a prop cigar. So, the real uh, cigars are definitely going to taste better. I'm just <laughs> saying they will. Prop cigars? Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and the third, uh, what was I lost the train? We're talking about the cigar. How does Jack walk? How does yeah. Jack walk? Yeah, that's... Like, his presence, like, every video yeah. interview I found of him sits like this. Every time, yeah, things yeah. like this, mm -hmm. and I was like, I was gonna I say, know. I didn't know if you'd find footage of him walking. I it was very difficult. Yeah, two, and they were from a show that he cameoed in, and he waddles. <laughs> it's, oh wow! Yeah, and I'm know. like, okay, so he's not gonna waddle for the whole show because he was older at this point. I was gonna so say, I, yeah, that's why. I, I, I was gonna say, how much of that are you keeping in mind in, in the performance? Like, uh, most of the interview material you're gonna find, he is already in his sixties. Yeah, yeah. First thing I did is that. Um, First off, I, I used to have him talk way down here. And I was like, this is because he's a grizzly older guy. And then I actually sat and listened to his interviews. I'm like, he really does kind of keep that youthful voice even when he gets mm -hmm. yeah. older. He has a little bit more raspiness as he gets older. But I brought the voice way up. And I just focused on this is a person who cares about everything in front of him at the moment. As long as I portray that, yeah, that's going to get Jack Kirby's 
Ugh, I hate to say this word, essence out there. Um, Are you yeah. doing like a Brooklyn thing? Yes. Um, so, Howie sounds in the show is like this. I've tried to fully imitate him, but it's really difficult in my opinion because I'm not an imitator. I, I am a voice actor, but I've never won for imitations. I make my own voices. So, I just kind of, like, I'm not the person for this imitation. I'm going to make my own voice for it. Yeah. Yeah. That's probably smart. Yeah. And... Because other, otherwise it might come off kind of cartoony. Yeah. That is very true, yeah. The lower voice came off a little cartoony a couple of times. <laughs> I do want to say that I had the complete opposite approach to Stan because... And that's even with the, how so the show... made him a cartoon camera. Well, that's even with how like the show is written, too. Okay. Where okay. there are scenes, too, where on one hand... He's like, Jack, you are the Jupiter of comics. You are a god in the pantheon of comicdom. You will tear... But then... But he said stuff like that. He said that. stuff like that. That's just how he talked. And then I think in a lot of ways, too, when you pull it back, when you actually have a, you know, get serious for a minute and talk about how, you know, like every interview I ever gave, I said you were the king, how you still need to have that little bit of you still have to have that little bit of the impression but you can do things with it you can pull it back you can find that humanity within like somebody who does have a brand who is like basically the you know comic book carnival barker and find like that whatever the essence is and try to keep like the showman but still have the person I so, think because Stan is the most recognizable yes, of, yes. of the names, I think it's mm. more important for Chris to have a more similar voice to the actual Stan because yeah. we all know how Stan talks. Yeah, like yeah. He's, it he's would be Stan intrusive if you didn't. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're gonna expect like, that. We all know, yeah. but like with like Roz and Joe and you know mm. Martin and even Jack, really, like we we all have you know our accents for the area, but that's pretty much it. Like we we weren't trying to like you know most people be haven't as actively listen to yeah. those people yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah like i mean i yeah i didn't ever really like try and like look up videos of joe talking because i don't think it matters really because like no no one's like hearing me talk in my accent and being like that does not sound like joe simon because <laughs> yeah. no no nobody really knows but with with stan it would have been a little weird if stan came out with an accent <laughs> and the only thing i've ever heard with with Roz, she's she's older i mean yeah. it's like four years before he before kirby mm -hmm. dies so yeah maybe yeah. two years before he dies I mean, Ross kind of became, like, uh, it was after, you know, Jack passed away, too. That's when you start hearing the legend of Roz and how she oh, was. Was, he, was she his Eliza? She was his... <laughs> I'm just going to put this up here. Just going to put this... <laughs> <laughs> hey, Chris, when did she pass? Because I actually don't know that. I think she passed not too long after he did, too. Off the... Oh, okay. 96 ish Yeah. Maybe, maybe. I, I feel like that's 90s. close. I, mm -hmm. I kind of went over some of her interviews... Mm -hmm. um, just to kind of get a feel for the kind of person that she was. Because mm -hmm. I knew I would have to kind of jazz up the accent a little bit. And I kind of yeah. mixed a few, like, mm -hmm. things up. So it's kind of a 30s, 40s, Brooklyn-y kind of <laughs> New Yorker I accent. I genuinely adore how you do it. Because oh, every time. <laughs> there is just this energy to it. It's like, I am Roz Kirby, and you're going to know it. And it's, just, it's great. <laughs> it's got dirty to it. Okay, well, I'm flirting. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, the yeah, first exactly. scene you see Roz, she is actively flirting with Jack. That's the only reason I took yeah. I took yeah. the job was so that I could flirt with Glenn. I know. I mean, was that was, that yeah, was it. I would flirt with Glenn, too. I, I mean, that was it. Um, and, and even Alex was like, yeah, flirt with Please flirt with Glenn. Um, and I don't know if you mentioned this on camera, but you, you told me you've You've had no acting experience before oh, this, right? Oh yeah, no. I I was supposed to be a behind the scenes kind of person doing doing nothing, and <laughs> um, <laughs> I've never acted. I I have a background in finance and education, human services, and I'm going to law school. So like, I'm not an actor. But, but she's a great actor. It's an amazing, t yeah, it's amazing because you basically are a natural too. Like we put the script in front of you, and it's like. Oh, wow. Yeah, like she said, oh, I'm just going to re read yeah. the Roz now and we'll, we'll find a Roz. And then she did the reading, and I was like, no, like, you did fantastic reading yeah. for Roz. Like, what are you talking about? I mean, you're a discovery. What can I say? Yeah. <laughs> take credit. 
I DJ, was, uh, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was just a little surprised that he asked me, he texted me the next day, he's like, hey, so, uh, no pressure, <laughs> but uh, I would like you to be Ross, and I was like, I think I need to think about this, because I am not sure that I want to, you know, yeah, yeah. talk in front of people, uh, <laughs> so, but I decided to go ahead and just uh, take the risk, so. If I'm really bad, it's his fault. <laughs> it's all right. Really that's bad. that's the She's bird great. of the director. Yeah. <laughs> DJ, let's go back to the comics. To the comics. The comics. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, we just got a super chat in right when you were talking. Um, Chewbacca's lover, five dollars. Kirby oh, claimed Stan never wrote anything, which is verifiably untrue. Other employees at the time confirm this, and Kirby got bitter in his old age. I always wondered if was almost a semantic thing if when he said stan didn't write anything he meant stan didn't plot anything yeah because yeah, we even, it mean, even says it in the play yeah. he says like you know he he filled in the bubbles he wrote it yeah. it's just he wrote it off of his notes and his pictures so he like in and, his mind kirby didn't think that stan actually wrote it because he you know had little plot notes and he like had the characters fighting and he was one who picked you know, Stan didn't tell him what to draw. He didn't say, hey, make this scene, and then he drew it. Also, like, he, drew the scenes, he didn't and then do full Stan script. Wrote. He didn't do, like, you know, page one, panel one. I mean, it's... Which, I mean, it's funny, too, because... Um, the one interesting thing is that we've all kind of accepted, like, yeah, that's just how... It's Marvel style. And to... I mean, to this day, occasionally, you still hear about some artists working that style, too, um, Scott Snyder, Greg Pulo, apparently almost like got in a fist fight because Greg Pulo wanted him to write it in Marvel style. And um, Scott Snyder is like, no, I'm doing a script. Because I guess that's a thing McFarland would do back in the Spawn days, too. Yep. Um, because, yeah, he would just say, okay, we need, uh, we just need Spawn doing something cool. Just four pages, go ahead. Well, go there's ahead. a lot to be said for Marvel now. Yeah, uh, because it's a it's a good way to get things out quickly. Yeah. Yes, but the problem is it also if you don't have uh, an artist and a writer that are really in tune and in sync and don't right. have ego issues with each other. Yeah, uh, to figure out where the writer begins and the artist ends. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I think that's what was so good about like Simon and Kirby in the beginning, like. In the beginning, like, they're, like, you know, a team. Like, they're working, like, in Simon's apartment, like, yeah. hanging out. And, you know, then Simon, like, boldly asks for name credits on the cover. He's like, <laughs> oh, I wanted to say our names on, on the cover. And then they get the, uh, I believe, Timely to yep. agree to do yeah. that. Um, no, it was national. It was, it national. was national. Yeah, it was coming national. from, yeah, was sorry, coming from yeah. Timely. I'm yeah, not a timely. comics girl. And, I... <laughs> well, that's the thing, too, that... Um, I know you mentioned like Kirby's career in the eighties in animation. Yeah. Uh, a lot so much of the show and it's an excellent script, it's a script I absolutely adore, but it also just kind of scratches the surface of how amazing the story actually is. Yeah. yeah. Because um you know, we got fit in an hour and the full version's like an hour and a half too, so you can't really go into go too deep into the new gods like you know my the classic kirby story of kirby going to dc and be like okay what are you canceling i'm not going to take another guy's job that's not in the play uh kirby i mean him quitting is depicted but it's not him walking in and putting like his cigar out on the table with his resignation <laughs> uh you know there's so much that's fascinating about this story and so much of it that you can only fit so much and uh even the complexities of okay first it was timely then it was atlas then it was marvel and yeah how do you get all the details in yeah there's so much and in such a way where people that weren't already familiar with the history could even follow it yeah and, and then of course it's naturally biased because it's about kirby mm -hmm. we're always going to yeah, be like he yeah. is a sympathetic character you can yeah. honestly hate everybody else point. but you cannot hate kirby yeah, yeah there's yeah. even some like you know fight scenes between joe and simon 
uh, Joe and uh, Kirby. And what I mean by that fight scenes, I mean like verbal fight scenes. We do not fist fight in the play. I mean, uh, but, I mean, but, I, I shadow box it. There, there, Somebody there. does ask, like, we're doing this upside bungee with like a it's oh a bungee gosh. cord gym. Somebody did ask, like, so are you gonna have like big superhero like Spider Man no, turn off the dark not. fights? Too? Yeah, I think we should. I think we should put Chris in the bungee harness. And <laughs> we have to get Bono him. first, though. No, I think that'd be hilarious, <laughs> but that's not what we do. I mean, that's not what we're, what we're doing, but I think it would be great. So but next year. <laughs> next yeah. year, exactly. But there, there's this scene um, where uh, Jack and Simon, like, stop working together, and I affectionately refer to it as the breakup scene, <laughs> uh, and it breaks my heart every time. It's like this friend breakup, and he's like, oh, we knew this thing was only temporary, and... It's it's real sad, and then like they they meet up later, and they 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 yeah you know, even like later in life they like they weren't they were not buddies they were not pals you know like they were buddies and pals to begin with but then you know yeah it, comics got in the way it yeah. always seemed like an Eastman Laird situation to oh, me oh yes I mean it's funny too because um, I by the way, can I tell a story can I tell a story about well it? sure yeah I just want to tell a little story about how I got into comics. So my dad was a public affairs officer up in West Point, and he'd have to go to the printers every uh, so often and just get like the the lamp, star the stripes, stuff like that too. And a lot of indie comic publishers would publish stuff up there. And he comes home one day, shows my mom's like, and this was what early nineties, late eighties. <laughs> this well, when you hear what the book was, you'll have a time oh, no. frame. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I don't but, know if I will. I'm but sorry it's... I didn't mean to interrupt. <laughs> I'm just turned to dust as we talk. I just want, I just want you to feel old. It's... I'm just asking for <laughs> historical context. Yeah. So you mean when I wasn't even alive yet? Oh, God. No, no, you were not alive. You weren't even a thought. So, But he comes back with this weird indie book that's violent, that's all about like cartoon characters, like, you know, killing each other, and they are super crude, and... There's like a bunch of Frank Miller references of all things, and he's like, "This is the weirdest thing." My mom was like, oh, "What oh, yeah. do you have?" Yeah, you know exactly where I'm going with this. <laughs> years later, I knew it a while ago. Yeah, but, you, you know, know exactly. I, yeah. <laughs> so, years later, yeah, you know, my mom. I come into the picture, and my mom. But but me. how new was it? Is what I'm wondering. It was like, like brand new. It was like fresh oh, so, on the printer. So it was '84. It was '84. Wow. Yeah. Crazy. So right. yeah, that's the year I was born. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was born eighty five, okay. so we're good. Even alive. Yeah. No, I wasn't. So years later, I come into the picture. Mom takes me to the uh, the the drugstore, the little rack of the drugstore, yeah. and says like, "Okay, well, I learned how to read with comics." And my mom was a big comics person too. Her idol growing really? up was yeah, her idol growing up was Lois Lane. Mm -hmm. That's cool. So yeah, she says, "This is how I learned how to read," and I want Superman's you to... girlfriend. Lois exactly, Lane. yeah. And takes me up to the racks and says, "Just pick out what you want." And I pick out what the book that looked like the cartoons I watched at Grandma and Grandpa's. So I come back and she's like, how did they make a kid's comic out of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Wait, it was, you were talking yeah. about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. It was super I, I know the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I didn't realize you were talking the about that. The first yep. issue of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is Shredder just going, all right, team, we're going to go murder the Shredder. The Splinter, yeah. The Splinter, Splinter yeah. yeah. Yep. Sweater, yeah. No, no, Shred Shredder is killed off in the first issue. Yes. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. he got popular, and he then Eastman popular. Laird had to keep coming up with very strange ways to bring him back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's just comics, too, to be fair. Yeah, sure. Yeah, no but, one's ever perfect. But first issue. Yeah, first Multiverse. issue. <laughs> and it's amazing, too, because, um, yeah, I mean, the same thing happened with, like, the Joker, too. Yeah. Like, it's back in like the old days where Batman would just like you know cold murder a guy too <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we are already almost at an hour crazy enough oh wow D DJ uh, I think I see another okay. super chat uh yes Chewbacca's lover is still very heated about this um <laughs> he says Stan did take credit he didn't deserve but that doesn't make everything kirby said true no stan no, did no, fully no. write some stories and plot stuff well i'm glad you mentioned that because this is a point i wanted to make earlier it would be really contradictory of kirby if he was i'm just interpreting the things i've heard maybe maybe differently than you are chewbacca's lover but yeah. um if he because you also might be quoting something i've not heard but if he ever straight up said <laughs> stan lee never wrote anything he would be uh really hypocritical because 
He also complained a lot earlier, and one of the reasons he left, I think, uh, because Stan Lee would uh, change things that he was clearly plotting with his artwork, with his yeah. writing. Mm -hmm. So if he didn't write anything, how could he do that? Right. Yeah. Well, you know, we've heard the stories, too, about how uh, the issues with him and Ditko, too. Mm -hmm. It's also entirely possible that Kirby that was speaking well. in yeah. hyperbole. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. when you're that mad about something, it's so easy to just like, I'm going to add this little detail to seem just a little bit more sympathetic. Yeah. People yeah. do that when well, they and, exactly. and again, yeah, exactly. that, yeah. as always, context is important. So exactly. when I heard Kirby say I wrote everything, it was in response to the question, uh, how was it plotted? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not what words were written on the page. Exactly. Yeah. It's a yeah. different question. Yeah. Or even like character names, too. Yeah. Like, I mean, Stan Lee loved his alliteration, too. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's interesting, too, because it's kind of, we're kind of wading into like a super. A polarizing debate because there's yeah. even folks who will tell you and this is not something i stand by let me just say right now there are people who even argued that you know the alliteration was a kirby thing which i i don't buy i don't buy that either i don't buy I, that either no. i've heard that say like no he created the silver surfer therefore kirby was the alliteration guys like i don't no, think that's, that's going too far that's one guy yeah, that's... <laughs> he, wasn't, he wasn't his sensibilities were not as corny as yeah. stan lee is yeah. like right, really right, clearly right. Uh, the Silver Surfer thing, I think, is one of uh, the most tragic and depressing yeah. things. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Because Kirby did create that out of whole cloth. Yeah. And uh, he, he just, to be fair, it wasn't like this character he created because he was in love with it in, in yeah. the first place. It just He just came up with it and threw it in an issue. Right. But then he kept doing things with him. And then when there was a Silver Surfer ongoing, he didn't get to write it or draw yeah, it. Yeah, he didn't get yeah. to do anything with that. Exactly, yeah. And then... Uh, he was asked to fill in on it. Ooh. <laughs> he, he filled in on I think I think issue eight. Uh, he was Ooh. asked to come in and and work one issue on yeah. his creation that was taken away from him. Yeah, you can see how you'd be upset at that too. I mean, that's. I mean, when people and so you read that issue. Sorry, it, yeah, it's Silver Surfer with all this righteous anger. Yeah, and you can tell where it's coming from. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's funny too because when people think the Silver Surfer. And I'll give I'll give Stan credit. Like he never claimed to create the Silver Surfer. Like he always said, like I went in and Jack had some nut on a surfboard, <laughs> and that's the story I heard. You know yeah. when uh, back in like the old AOL days when you had keyword Marvel comics and they had the little like Stan soapbox videos. And, uh, AOL but... stood for America Online. <laughs> Are yeah. you looking blank at AOL? What? <laughs> no, I, no, think no, just I know what AOL is. Okay. I'm sorry, AOL. Back in my day, kids, internet came through the phone. <laughs> I, was, no, I, I, do know, I do know what AOL is. So what did your awesome. internet sound like? Um, <laughs> okay. I will say. Beep, 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 dial up for internet. I, I, did, I did have dial up. When I was like five or six, I didn't even have com com computer, computer when I was five or six. Okay, I didn't have like my 13? own computer. Yeah. We had like a family computer in the family computer room. Okay, my family didn't even have a family computer until I like, there was like, like hey, it was very boxy. Room for it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there was the nineties computer. It was, room, it was man. very exactly. boxy yeah. and large. You got um, your big box of your Windows 3.1 to play the Minesweeper. I, I played Mind called sweeper. Penguin Mind and Webkins on it. Uh. <laughs> DJ, uh, before we wrap things up, do you see any other questions in the comments that are fascinating that we need to tackle? Oh, pressure is on. Um, and thanks for your patience tonight, man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Blue Dragon Five. Well, you already answered this one. He he did ask um, what kind of research you did to for the, for the role. Did you read the graphic novel autobiography that they put out on Kirby? Oh, I forgot. But you kind of already you kind of already oh, asked that one. Yeah. I have read it. I still have time to do research. I'll take any suggestions. <laughs> Three, I still have a couple weeks, yeah. yeah. My, yeah. We got like we got ten we days. Have, we have ten days. Ten days. That's yeah. not say that's me now. My anxiety's ramped up. Like, oh my God, well, ten days. Yeah. Yeah. So much to do. <laughs> just, your anxiety. I'm. We moving. could have been learning. Yeah, yeah, you're moving too. On I, top I'm of the show. I'm moving in yeah. two days, and she the show could have been ten. She could have been aping Kirby's style. I mean, there's all these things you guys could be doing this evening. I will say the research I did was being a nerd. See, when I get to talk about the new. Gods. It's called dramaturgy now. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Um, okay, real quick, I want to go down the line mm -hmm. and ask each of you to describe the character you're playing in a single word. Hmm. Oh, I have mine. Okay, you go, you go first, Violet. Suit. 
<laughs> uh, we oh. could we could just go counterclockwise. Yeah. Oh god. Okay. Um. <laughs> I would say supportive, but but not That's more than but <laughs> not but not like always behind the scenes supportive. She's like, get out there. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Yeah. Excelsior! <laughs> That's probably the, uh, the, the, only the thing correct I answer, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's the, yeah. I'd probably say artist. Yeah. That's fair. That's fair. There's a lot of weight behind that word because that's what he always put himself as. That's true, mm-hmm. yeah. Exactly. Your uh, daddy's not unemployed, he's an artist. <laughs> he's not unemployed, he's an artist. You can't just sit at home and draw funny pictures all day like daddy. <laughs> that's that's, all that's I wonderful. Play. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to do this earlier, but I, I want to go ahead and uh, make sure this happens before we finish up tonight. So I told you guys about um, that radio interview I found, yes. and I wanted to play you a quick excerpt from that. Yeah, uh, I, so this is going to be just Jack Kirby talking for about 46 seconds, okay. and uh, of course you guys know um, I really review superhero movies yes. for a living that's most that's mostly what i do mm-hmm. and uh really interesting in 1990 the year after batman comes out listening to uh jack kirby predict superhero film oh wow. and what would happen with the future of that so i'm gonna play yeah, this real quick cool. <laughs> glenn's like i did my research i know what's up <laughs> yeah i listened to a little bit of this yeah uh, is there some sort of um tie-in with uh fascination with superheroes right now for the movies or is it just because Batman makes made so much mo- uh, money, uh, they're going to start to go overboard with this kind of stuff? Or well, what? my guess it was uh, Batman who generated the uh, generated the trend. Uh, I think the trend will continue, and uh, you'll see uh, good ones made and bad ones made. But uh, the trend will continue, and uh, the superhero uh, uh, has and always win, uh, has and always will be part of the American scene. And of course, uh, today, uh, he's visual, and I believe that he'll stay visual mm-hmm. and in motion. Yeah, I agree. Thank you. So what do you guys think of that? I would definitely, definitely agree, too. Mm-hmm. Um, there are some really bad superhero movies. <laughs> there are some really bad. <laughs> Just, and a, there already were. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> most I mean, of them hadn't been made yet. <laughs> there, there's yeah. a band to play where he gives Stan advice to always funny. throw the first punch. Part of throwing the first punch is knowing what that punch needs to be. So, of course, he would have that foresight of being like, there's going to be these films, and for whatever reason, bad and good. So, it just speaks to how intelligent he was about art scenes and especially the comic scene. What I thought was interesting about that is that his answer wasn't, it's a fad and it will go away. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, he's... I mean, he'd been at this point working in the industry for half a century, Mm -hmm. and created saw characters he created um and superheroes stayed on top superheroes stayed Mm -hmm. on top and the one thing too is in the case of captain america he created a character in 41 that character declined and then came back yeah and was even bigger you could arguably so and he watched that happen with x-men x-men yeah i mean that's the thing too people don't really think about how the X Men. He was were... alive to watch the cartoon show happen. That's true. Yeah. Right, we'll uh, and people don't. Really... I'm not saying he necessarily would have paid attention to that, but he would have seen the hype. <laughs> Jack, he would have seen. <laughs> no way, Jack. He would have at least hate watched it. <laughs> he would watch it. Be like, there's Claremont guys. <laughs> but this, uh, but I mean, people don't realize that. Yeah, those early X Men comics were. I mean, they were there, but they yeah. weren't quite the phenomenon they would become, and. But still, at the end of the day, even with like the Krakoa stuff and the Hellfire Gala, yeah. you still have Charles Xavier and Magneto. Those are very much the Jack Kirby creation. So those are very much... Now, our, we could have the conversation about Doom Patrol later. <laughs> Just because I, I love me some Doom Patrol. <laughs> I mean, who doesn't? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> but that, yeah, he saw things get reinvented he saw things that he created stick around and um you know with the case of like iron man um uh, with a you have like this guy in like a bulky iron gray costume they made gold to make it fancy and then 
and you start having like David the Bottle, you start having like the Armor Wars, and then you have like the Hulk, which I mean nowadays we've got Immortal too, which is one of uh with, that was one, was one of my favorite runs of any comic ever. I get more requests for that yeah. for modern stuff than anything, and I still haven't read it. But, yeah. It's it's wild, too. <laughs> it's like, oh, wow, they're uh, talking about Kabbalah in a Hulk comic. This is wild. Uh, but yeah, when you've seen your creations take so many different forms and be so versatile and be able to adapt to whatever the time is called for or to grow... I mean, you that has to put something in your mind that these there's something to these, and these aren't a fad, and these aren't going away, and these will adapt to whatever you throw at them, yeah. and they will grow, and they may not always be good, but they'll be there, and they'll be unique. Well, I think, just from my personal experience, every kind of era has their own version of the su- the hero, the superhero, yeah. the, the hero's journey, and all that. Mm-hmm. It's not new. Yeah, but I yeah. think it's just the fact that a lot of these characters are relatable to us now. Yeah. And, yeah, we've changed a lot in the past 50, 60, 70 years. But the truth of the matter is, not enough. I, I don't relate as much to Hercules as I do with Captain Marvel. Or, mm-hmm. you know, I yeah. don't, you know, you think of King Arthur. Okay, well, that's, you can't connect with that person. because, mm-hmm. the, But, you know, you can look and you can see, like, I like Scarlet Witch. She, you know, I mean, I'm just going to say, though, mm-hmm. like... It sports women's rights and women's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> she she messes up. She yeah. does things that, like, I'm looking and watching that movie. I'm like, you know, depending, I can't say that I wouldn't do something like that. Not saying that I'm a villain. I mean, a little bit, but... I mean, if your kids died? I mean, yeah, you no. There were other I'm, kids I'm, that were I'm the exact saying. same as your kids in another multiverse? I'm I mean, just saying, like, mm. I feel like we can relate a little bit better to these characters. <coughs> because, especially with so much more representation, like, Miss Marvel, oh my god, love it. And then, what's the, in the new Doctor Strange movie? Uh, America, America, Chavez. America, Chavez. America Chavez. Oh, I'm so yeah, yeah, happy. Yeah. I love yeah. her. It's a character I never thought I would care anything about, but she's really good in that movie. She's yeah, so yeah. good. I, I, mm-hmm. I had such a great she time watching moms. that movie. She has two moms. She's <laughs> Puerto Rican. I was like, yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know. I just, I had, I had a really good time just learning about all the different facets. Of the superhero, because like it used to be like okay, you can like Superman or you can like Batman, and that's it. Mm-hmm. But now like there's there's so much more, and I think it kind of goes along mm-hmm. with the fact of there's gonna be good, there's gonna be bad, but this is like this is our pantheon. Yeah. Like these are our Greek gods, and and I think that that's kind of how we feel is they're a larger than life character, mm-hmm. but they still have relatable traits. Yeah, I think especially like you were talking about like the different generations and we don't even just see that in like different generations of superheroes being popular. We even see that in like certain superheroes like mm-hmm. like Spider-Man for instance, you know, you have the Toby films and then you have the Andrew films and then you have the Tom films and all of those happened within 20 years. Yep. You know? And so to see like just the character of Spider-Man even evolve through the Toby and then the Andrew and then the Tom movies has been really interesting, even just in my lifetime. Like, I've been alive for all of those movies. Well, the one thing, too, that, um, just to use the, use Batman as an example. She just have... needs us to know that she's not 14. <laughs> what? Uh, didn't, 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 didn't the first Spider-Man movie come out in, like, 03? 02. 02. 02. 02. Okay, well, that yeah. would, I, if, I, if I was I was in high I'm school. Saying, it seems very important to you yes. that we know that you're not Exactly. This is Violet. They're an adult. I, if, okay. <laughs> If, if I if I was born in 02, I would currently be 20. No, I know. Oh, that's oh my God. Oh, God. That's Don't guys. say that. Don't say that. <laughs> I want you to know that I'm old enough to legally drink. That's what's important. Let me just say... Uh, <laughs> that's important. Anyway, so movies. let me just say right now... Uh, We're going to need to go ahead and wrap up here. To yeah, but uh, looking at Batman, too, like the Snyder Cut Batman is a different Batman than... Uh, the Batman than Pattinson Batman. No, of course. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and that's within, like... Uh, granted, you know, if we're using the Snyder Cut as an example, within like a couple of years that we have two Well, and I don't want to get too far off base, but some of this also just has to do with uh, the current Hollywood trend of just stay safe and keep and, 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 and keep with brand, with name recognition. That too, yeah. And <laughs> stuff that might get butts in seats. Yeah. Um, 
But uh, yeah, so Phil Kelton, uh, we lost uh, DJ. I don't know what happened there. Uh, <laughs> well, DJ's like retired of this. He didn't come back before the end of the show. Oh, he's back. Okay, he's back. Speak of the devil. You're DJ, back. everything okay? Sorry about that. My daughter was crying. I had to go. Oh, oh that's all right. No problem. <laughs> her. Uh, DJ, why don't you throw those last couple super chats at us and then we will call it an evening. <laughs> we'll do. We'll do. All right, we've got. One from Philip Kelton in all caps that just says, Read Immortal Hulk, Cap. I know, I'll do, do it. it. It's, it's on my list. <laughs> I've been catching up on some stuff recently. I'm thinking about uh, DJ in the next couple weeks sitting down and doing some kind of like just real quick comic roundup thing instead of separate videos for everything because I don't right. really have time to go back and look at everything. But I don't know, just a quick sign flip uh, on some things. I read... Uh, um, Tom King's Batman Catwoman. Uh, stay far, far away from that. <laughs> I read uh, the yeah. Superman 78 comic. It's wonderful. Yeah. Uh, and I started Last Ronin, uh, Nin Ninja Turtles. That's on my and list. It's, yeah, and, that and is it's, on my list. So far, it is uh, just spectacular. So anyway, um, but I'll try to talk about those things soon. Um, okay, and then uh, I think Chewbacca's lover is still trying to make the same point he made 20 minutes ago. <laughs> Still, yeah, he's still on Team Stan. Uh, Stan did fully plot stories, and he fully scripted stories, and other times he made artists do most of the work. Kirby claimed Stan wrote nothing. I, just, I would love to hear the source for saying Kirby claimed <laughs> Yeah, again, I've never yeah, heard him say precisely I, that. I didn't yeah, see that. I, mean, I would love to, I'd love to hear it. It's great research. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm not saying I don't believe you. I'm just saying that the only time I've heard I, I say anything like that is in the context of just plotting, and I, yeah. I like I don't want to just spin our wheels here. But uh, thanks again for the super chat, though, buddy. I appreciate it. Um, DJ, we can end it off with one more quick question. If you see anything uh, that's uh, like Thor's hammer worthy, um, <laughs> well, I know you. Finish up here. I know you always say you're not good at these kind of questions, but these guys might have more insight since they're they actors. Might be better than me, yeah. absolutely. It's, it's um, all plausible. Blue Dragon 5 wants to know who you would cast as Jack Kirby in a biopic. Well, I was going to ask you guys uh, if you think that script deserves to be made into a biopic. 100%. 100%. You'd have to get multiple actors, though. Because, I mean, yeah. we, we have in our, in lots of stages. Of I life. would much rather that than the, than the de-aging thing. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, yeah. There's a few things uh, where I think they would want to look at it because there are lines that work very well on stage, but... A lot of it is talking to the audience. Oh, well, you'd have to adapt it. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, like, like, like I anything. could see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I think um, but but I who think would you cast? I don't know, people. The <laughs> uh, thing is that I would really want to go to the representation side because I look nothing like Kirby. He was a, uh, he had darker skin than me. He's Jewish. He is just a completely different person of what I am. So I just kind of sit there like, I can think of people that look like me, but because my brain is just wired that way. So honestly, I don't know. Uh, my first reaction, and I hate to say it, but honestly, Chris Evans was like my first thought, and I'm like, that is such a basic Marvel answer. Dude, <laughs> my first thought was RDJ. <laughs> so no, that's not a good question for me. But I'll, I'll give you, you, you guys might think I'm crazy when I say this. It just jumped in my head. Right. Uh, tell me if I'm nuts. I, I okay. might be. You're, so, so you're saying uh, you cast several people as Jack Kirby. When right. he gets to 70, William Shatner. I could see it. <laughs> I mean... Uh, first of all, he's Jewish. It's yeah. true. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. That was the first thing that jumped to my to my mind. I think he could do justice to the could part. Work. I could see Captain Kirk as young Jack Kirby. I'm not sure about older William Shatner. I could see, like... But I'm talking about older William Shatner as older Jack Kirby. Yeah, I could, yeah. I could see it, so yeah. I, I, he actually accidentally ran into me at Planet Comic Con. Uh, <laughs> like, he was trying to get to his booth and legit just elbowed but me. And was like, sorry. Shatter, yeah. And I was like... No, the late right Jack Kirby. The late Jack Kirby. <laughs> and I was like... Just a like, ghost pops up and it's like, hello there. But also just seeing like the way he acts. Like, he genuinely cares about what people are talking to him at his booth. But at the same time, it's like, I got 150 people to go through. You need to rush this. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. so I'm like, I really think he could actually put that through with an older Kirby. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. he experiences it. <laughs> I, have, I don't know. It was yeah. a notion. I, I don't right off have anything great for younger Kirby. I've got, like, I can't get rid of this. Uh, Ray Wise? Like, from Twin Peaks and Robocop is in my head? Boy, I can't picture him right off. He yeah, was, no. uh, the, oh god, he was, uh, um, Leland Palmer in Twin Peaks. 
Uh, I'm trying to think of other stuff he was in. Like... I'm sorry, Connor. I don't know that show, okay? And you know I don't. <laughs> yes, suddenly Connor just appeared in the chat. Did he really? Of course yeah. he did. <laughs> he personally, like, what'd you say? Of course he did. He, he was Hitchman number five in Robocop too. So, I mean, that's the Robocop <laughs> Do you one. have your phone ping you when anything by David Lynch comes up on the channel, Connor? Like, <laughs> my apologies. Does anybody else have a good answer for that? Uh, see, my problem is I am so great with faces, but when you ask me someone's name, I'm like, ah, you know, I'm not, I'm really not, not good at, I've seen a few actors who I'm like, okay, but you know what? I feel like, especially for younger Kirby, I saw some pictures of younger Kirby and Mm -hmm. I was like, younger Kirby's still your girl. Like, (laughs) oh yeah, yeah. (laughs) So, but he wasn't like. And, and I think even in the play, we mentioned that he wasn't, like, tall and stately. He was just just a dude. And so <laughs> I would think that if you're going to have an actor playing younger Kirby, just needs to Unknown. be just, like, an average guy. But I do agree That's with that representation. That's wild eyes. Yeah. yeah. I will say, if you have uh, somebody who's Jewish who can fight, clearly, Bill Gold for, <laughs> for Jack Kirby. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm just saying, Santa Slay... Masterpiece. Just say it. <laughs> DJ, you want to throw us that last super chat, man? Sure. It is from your old pal Chewbacca's lover. <laughs> Hello, sir. He comes back Thank like Bill Goldberg. Chat. Obviously, yeah. <laughs> he says that Marvel Comics: The Untold Story is his source. Cool. cool. I'll have to Thank read you. That. Yeah. Which I mean, I just I just read that section, but I don't yeah. remember saying specifically that. But perhaps he did. I'm just saying that there could be a whole semantic. I mean, it's an easy I was gonna say it's right there on the table too. So yeah, I'm not. We'll have to look at it after. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, All right. Well, everybody, thanks a lot for watching, and I hope you guys had a good time. Oh yeah, Yeah. Yeah. so much fun. Thank Uh, you. See the show, by the way. It is. uh, Let me. uh, Here's the camera. Hey, right there. (laughs) It's right there. There we go. (laughs) (laughs) It kind of looks like Rob from (laughs) Super Smash Brothers. Oh my god. Yeah. Are we going to play Stack Up or Gyro Mike? <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, uh, see King Kirby at Upside Bungie in the West Bottoms. The show goes from July 22nd to July 30th with a possible best of show on the 31st if we sell more tickets than any other show at that venue. Just saying. Uh, oh, good luck, you guys. Now I feel like I'm part of a fundraiser. Exactly, please. <laughs> Just if, but uh, no, it's a competition. It's a competition. Well, no, we're Casey Fridge is super cool. All the artists are super friendly. We get along. They encourage that. But uh, but we want to win too. Friendly, sure. It's friendly. Yeah. Sure. But uh, tickets are available at CaseyFridge.org. Show dates are there as well. Uh, we actually have a nice little. I was proud of this. Poster here. This poster is designed by. They cannot see it, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Our poster is designed by Michelle Widener is that here. How Kirby walks? <laughs> yeah, it's very. <laughs> it's kind of like, Hi, it's me, Jack Kirby. Here we go. Like, please uh, don't, please don't notice my hip problems. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, there's five show eggs between eight days. Um, we do have a preview at the black box. At, I believe seven o'clock. Uh, at the black box of the west bottoms we're doing a small little one to two minute preview check it out and also see a lot of the other shows at the french fest there's apart from ours there's a lot of great theater there and you would be you would be you would you would make jack kirby sad to miss out on this great heart Whoa, I'm just saying that. I can hear Jack Kirby in my ear. Just saying that, like, obviously. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, well, do whatever the hell you want. Yeah. Exactly what said. But if you'd like to support local artists, small yeah. time little guys like us, yeah. um, you certainly can buy tickets, even if you know you happen to miss the day or you live too far away. Well, and Chris, thanks for uh, reaching out and getting me back into this yeah. kind of thing because I haven't been to any theater in a long time and I miss yeah, it quite a bit. So. Well, thanks for having us too. We Absolutely. Really appreciate it. So I don't really know what day yet, but I will be there. Day. All right, sounds good. <laughs> awesome. yeah. yeah, yeah. And I uh, hope to hang out with you guys again. Please oh, do. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. I will say that if uh, can I plug something? Can I plug something? Uh, well, um, sure. Do we get to see you waddle again? I think that's the question. Oh, 
So hello there. Uh, okay, I'm going That's back to my seat. <laughs> well, it's got okay, what do you want? Uh, KCRF. I also KCRF too. Uh, definitely, I'm. Uh, in addition to this, I work for the Kansas City Renaissance Festival. We open September 3rd, go to October 16th. I'm also currently writing the... I'm currently reviewing Squadron Supreme for Multiversity Comics as part of their 2022 Summer Comics binge. So check that out as well. And I have reviewed Supreme Power, but I've never gone back to the original stuff. Oh, it's it's wild, too, because it's basically... There's a lot of similarities between that and Watchmen, even though oh, yeah. it came out a year before. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um definitely check out that too i'm i'm just around um uh, the comic scene the theater scene little bits here and there so that's if you me. are local there is a comic uh, like a cosplay weekend and nobody is but go ahead yeah um well you i mean he was <laughs> exactly. that one cop is that the exactly yeah i was too <laughs> you know you can come hang out with us i actually play rapunzel at the kansas city Runs festival you're gonna see my hair real quick this is yeah this is this is my hair it's and, very long and guys um, I've it's been, very fun i've been to our run fest a bunch of times we have one of the best in the nation yes it's, it's a really really good one it's one of the oldest too about yep. 40 this is our 45th anniversary yeah all the structures are like permanent structures and stuff it's yep. not like one of i get like, like six like, turkey legs I've yeah. been, oh my God, Only six? Legs. Those are rookie Dude. numbers. <laughs> I, I, I've been going since high school. There's literally a photo of me just when I was carrying some stuff back. It's like, hi, it's me with my best friend, six turkey legs. What? So anyway, we're going to go ahead and wrap up. Uh, DJ, thank you so much for uh, running the show, and I'm sorry for uh, the, the fact that you didn't get to talk to us all that much. This no, time. no worries. Uh, I talk every week, man. Let's give someone else a chance. <laughs> Uh, so guys, like I said, I am uh, on hiatus for the next couple weeks, uh, still doing a lot of trips and stuff with the family, uh, so I won't have Superhero Rewind for the next couple weeks and uh, requests and stuff, but uh, I might do a couple of uh, random improv streams here and there, uh, so you might see me before August 1st, I don't know yet, and then beginning of August, uh, I'll be back with regular content, uh, but also a lot of requests because we're going to be doing Request Month, catching up on uh, <laughs> some uh, old and new requests, some stuff going back a lot of years that I never got to. <laughs> uh, that Austin and I are going to knock out for you. So anyway, that should be a lot of fun. Um, I'm not going to tell you what yet, but there's some weird stuff in there. Uh, one of them, well, okay, I will say this. One of them might be the South Park movie. I think that might be in there. <laughs> anyway, uh, and that's a thing that uh, I've hardly ever watched, and uh, not since I was a kid. So anyway, thanks a lot for watching, guys. We sure appreciate it. Thank and you. Uh, you guys thank were you. fabulous. Oh, thank and you. thanks thank you. for uh, all of your insights about Kirby and early Marvel, and thanks for all of the discussion about the play. Um, I'm so excited to see you. Yeah, thank you very much for having thank us. You. Yeah. I was Captain Logan. This was DJ Martinez. And we'll have fun, guys. Real soon, folks. I have to get up and waddle across the room. Like, <laughs> Are you going to waddle? I have a wireless mouse right now. Uh, I might. But mine's going to be more like a Dana DeVito penguin. <laughs> <laughs> All right, later, folks. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Uh,